As the saga of SBF and FTX continues, we find ourselves confused as to what's likely to happen with Bitcoin. We've seen legacy global markets rising on good PPI and CPI numbers, and Bitcoin has obviously been caught up in a black swan event and for once is not following. It's almost like there's a global party that we were invited to, and at the last moment, they pulled our invite and told us not to come, and it's not really that cool. But can we find... Any any insight in the charts, I've got everyone's favorite big cheds here today to discuss everything that's going on and to discuss where technical analysis fits into the picture in a black swan event. You guys don't want to miss this. Let's go. Let's go. What is up, everybody? I'm Scott Melker, also known as the Wolf of All Streets. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel and smash the like button or like the smash button or tap the like button or like the tap button. I don't really care what you do with it. Just do it. As I mentioned before, got the legend Big Cheds here with me today. We were talking before the stream briefly, and I think all of us are just kind of in disbelief, confused and can't believe what is happening right now. As if it wasn't crazy and bad enough yesterday, Sam Bankman fried starts tweeting cryptic letters in order to eventually spell out what happened with everybody holding their breath seemingly for a day and a half just to see what he was spelling. And my God, I think it's time we stop paying attention to this guy. But I'm going to bring Big Cheds on right now, and we're going to go ahead and talk about it. What's up, my man? How are you today? How you doing, bud? I'm good. I mean, listen, I know we're supposed to be looking at charts and talking about trades and maybe we'll get there, but my God, man, give me your just like brief, quick take on, I guess, even we, we won't even go back because we've covered it every day in the last 24 hours yeah. of what's happening. Well, I'm, I'm feeling the, um, the warm blanket of the effective altruism, you know, I'm just feeling, <laughs> and you know, it's funny. I saw, didn't you see Michael Saylor put out a tweet? He said, Bitcoin is, if, and I'm like, what are you doing? Like, that's a bad association now, you know, effective altruism. Um, I don't know anything. I'm a chart guy, and I've just been learning a lot. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. I've been learning about how the funding goes, how this commingling and repatriating and uh, re-hierarching or whatever these fancy words people use, re rehypothecating. Hypothecating. I've been, you know, yeah. Yeah, I've been learning so much stuff. So, um, you know, I was listening to great spaces and people are like, let's get Chad's up here. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm like, I got nothing to say about this stuff. I mean, this is like, I don't, I'm just like you folks. I'm blown away. Um, I'm discouraged. I'm disheartened. I am, I'm trying to be, uh, empathic to people who are, who are really hurting. So, I'm, you know, I'm doing more streams and stuff. I'm trying to engage the community, doing what we can do, but just it's, you know, meteor hit and just, you know, everybody's dealing with the shockwave right now. Yeah, I find it interesting, actually, to your point, like how exploding now Twitter spaces is and yes. YouTube streams and the numbers are back and people are getting thousands of likes on tweets. You would think that people would be deserting the space, not engaging 10 times as much in the last week. But it seems that people are shows you I probably the breadth of how many people are hurting and looking for some sort of solace or information to make them feel better or just looking to make sense of all of it. Like it's very It's difficult. timing too. It's timing too, right? We just had the election. Uh, Elon's on Twitter. There's more people are on Twitter. And so it's a time, you know, crazy stuff usually happens in the fall. So I think it's one of those things where everyone's kind of watching at the same time. And, uh, but it's also a car crash. People stop for a car crash. So maybe that explains. Yeah. You know what's insane, you know? extra insane to me when you really dig into it is that, so now we know that obviously, Alameda blew up. So they were horrible traders, right? Yeah. Then they were FTX was able to effectively print money, making them a central bank, right? To bail it's out crazy. Alameda. FTX was offering high leverage to retail, which is literally free money, right? Because people lose when trading, even when they don't have leverage. So you give them leverage, it's guaranteed money for the exchange. So there was no way they could lose there. And Alameda had access to FTX's order books and was front running the customers. And they still blew up. It's just ridiculous. Like, how do you not, how dumb, incompetent do you have to be to blow up when you are the house and you're the casino and you're the central bank? How's it happen? 
it's greed. It's one of those things. Don't we, you know, we've seen these, um, these shows, you know, true crime or different investigations and you watch and you're like, wow, well, if this, this guy had just kept stealing a little bit over time, you know, they wouldn't have never been caught. Or if this person had just been happy with whatever, but it's always more, 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 more. And maybe almost even like wanting to be caught too. You don't know how the subconscious of these things, like we're such complicated creatures. And so it's always like multiple things that, that cause this, um, his reaction so weird, like the tweeting with the was he deleting tweets, Scott? And that's why he's trying I, to one. Now I think one. he wasn't. Now I think it's so you know it's very hard to uh, separate fact from fiction on Twitter right now. But apparently the reduction in his tweets was a result of other people deleting things he had retweeted, like Tom Brady deleted every FTX commercial from his uh, account, right? Okay. Things like that. That's what yeah. I'm seeing now. But I, I mean, I can't confirm or deny what, is what he was on? doing. It's not. I mean, I I, I noticed the tie. Who, you know, Josh Frank would have him here all the time. Like they um, archived all of uh, SBF's tweets. So I mean, there's yeah. no listen, there's no deleting tweets really, right? I, I mean, know. it's like yeah. I gotta imagine if the Justice Department comes to Twitter, like the tweets aren't gone; they're on a server somewhere. So yeah, I, yeah. I don't know, man. It's all nuts. So you then uh, speaking of those cryptic tweets, I mean, I'm assuming that you at least saw the existence of this New York Times article yesterday. Oh yeah, it's uh, it made me want to go to journalism school. It was so well done, it was so well, uh, so objective. I mean, I I read it and somebody did like um I don't know then who it was. It was like you know word association, no, no mention of scam, no mention of fraud, hack, like all this stuff. It was like this nice young man just things didn't work out. Gee golly, and it's like it really was the that was that was really the tone. It was like how how could this have possibly happened? They didn't is even this, mention, like, like the, I don't think how many customers had lost their right. assets. They didn't mention any of the fraud that we just discussed. I mean, they, none of it. Biggest in history, right? Isn't this like the biggest financial crime? And I was watching last night. I was watching TV, and it was like American Greed. And it was like, this person stole $300 million over seven years. I'm like, rookie numbers. I mean, yeah, I think this is double. I think it's a double Enron with what we already know. Are, yeah, and how, that's not just, even digging into the 130 shell companies or understanding the breadth. I mean, you yeah. know, listen, Travis Kling, I saw yesterday, Icky guy, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his fund. He's one of the nicest guys in the world. They blew up because of this. Their funds were sitting on FTX. I can't imagine yeah. how many of those we're going to see. It's almost, I mean, you, obviously, you know, there's reverberations and things under the surface that we'll see, you know, but in terms of um, like what just happened is so big. I don't think we know what to do with it. That's why we're seeing all these weird articles. Like it's so big, you know, there's this threshold where if it's a certain size of crime, we can contextualize it or whatever. Like this is just so crazy. We don't know what to do with it. I don't know what to make of it. This whole thing's nuts. It clearly hasn't um, settled in if people are writing puff pieces. You know, yeah. And the end of the piece was about those cryptic tweets. And Sam was basically like, I don't know. It just felt like time. I'm making it up as I go. I mean, oh, it, great, I, I don't great. want it's Is this guy like literally a psychopath? Is he off his meds? Is he? Yeah. Or is this? I mean, you look at him and you're like, maybe he's just like the penguin from Batman. And yes, going that down. could be it. I don't you know, I never followed him closely. I, I don't know if you've ever interviewed him or you maybe many have times, him. many you times. Have? Yeah. Yeah. He's, There's a lot of smart guys like you who talked to him and didn't like have a whiff of it and so like what do we like a you smart know? guy none of us were looking into his books it's the same yeah. thing yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I mean i guess it's fair to say that we were all duped but i also think yeah. that uh most of this blew up in the last six months right and so yeah well what do you think it, about now looking at june from june till now it all kind of makes sense that like 140 days sideways nonsense on the chart it was so kind of almost inorganic you know, yeah, we, I think we talked about Alameda it. wasn't trading. <laughs> yeah. I, and the, I really don't yeah. know. I mean, it seems that what's happened, I mean, it seems that they, like 3AC, blew up on effectively like a massive margin position, like getting long and the market crash just slowly crushed them. I mean, that's a, reportedly what happened to 3AC. How about the fact that those guys are back? Redemption. We went from, um, oh, I had a tweet and I deleted it because it wasn't like too funny or whatever, but it was like we went from, um, Ah, no, it wasn't even that good. I forgot, but it was something like we went from uh, proof of whatever to something redemption. Like it's a redemption arc now uh, for all these people. And um, if I remember how, what it was, it seemed clever at the time and I can't remember it now, but um, it's just everyone's going for redemption right now. And uh, it's like, oh, someone else screwed up bigger than me. 
you know, let me come out and virtue signal on what they did. And it's like, come on. And they're blaming them. And they're blaming, and they're blaming them. I mean, them. Kyle Davies flat out said, like, they got, but I mean, at some point, it's your, I mean, <laughs> I, I, my question for 3HC, listen, you can be a shitty trader and lose a whole fuck ton of money and got, yeah. God speeds. You know what I mean? But my question yeah. Yeah. surrounding 3HC is how did they get people to give them those massive loans when they were shitty traders and blowing up left and right? Because they had to have lied. And that's where the fraud is. Yeah. The fraud to me is how yeah. they got people like Steve Ehrlich at Voyager to give them six or seven hundred million dollars on collateralized. Yep. What were they telling them? What were they providing them? There's no way in my mind. I mean, my mind just can't fathom that there was no due diligence. So maybe yeah. I'm just wrong. But right. I mean, so to me, it's like there has to be something there. They're shitty it's a traders and they blow up and though. lose money. That's fine. It's a social cascade. They they just believed, you know, those people believed those folks because other people believed them. And you see how these things happen. And when you first think, I would never be in that position, but you never know if you were in that position. You might even give out, you know, money without doing DD if you felt like you had a relationship, if you felt like you trusted them and your buddies were investing in them, making money. It's one of those things where these things snowball and just get completely out of control. Yeah, that that tweet, that uh, comment that Mike just brought up, three AC or now four AC after all this year's inflation, <laughs> just uh, literally made me laugh while you were talking. That shit's that's pretty guess good. we know who the fourth arrow is now. That's it. That's true. That is true, man. Yeah. So what is, is the yeah. lawyer, the shady guy, Dan Forsberg or whatever? Is that what the deal I, is? I don't know. It's, and he was like, he was literally fixing poker online or something. I haven't even dug. Like it's there's a point where I just. It's like crazy. My brain shuts off because I like I can't rationally process it. But uh, yeah, apparently yeah. this guy was Dan Friedberg. So I don't remember what his name is. Forsberg, but... Friedberg, something. Yeah. Know. No, they had God mode. Iceberg. They had a poker. They had a poker website where they could like had God mode so they could see everyone's cards. Yeah. So just trade and they against. They probably them. lost money too. And yeah, they still I mean, lose yeah. money. It's like, what are we doing here? You know. Okay, well, let, listen, let's let's talk about yeah. some charts and see if we can find anything. I'm going to bring mine up first because this Go is my favorite it. chart right now. It's FDT, okay. USDT on oh. Binance. Oh. Uh, <laughs> In, invalid symbol. So I know oh, you, were short, you were short FTT, weren't you? I was short it. You know what? Now, let me empathize, right? Because I, I once lost, I think, about 20, 22K and something that, that got delisted. Like, I woke up and it was like, this no longer exists. And it was a thing where I was a true hardcore believer. I actually believed the guy behind it was intentionally delisting it to then relist it and uplist it and roll into a NASDAQ thing. And it was one of those things. So, you know, for people who are watching this who have still holding it, like I've been there, I've written stuff to zero. So I get it. You know, don't oh. think we're just joking callously. Like we've done this stuff, you know, before. Oh, yeah, we all have. We all have. I've told those stories. Many times. I'm going to bring up your charts that are not little ghosts that say invalid symbols. Yeah. So here, what are we looking at here? Uh, you know, what do we make of it? I mean, I, um, you know, we just broke down out of a, uh, you know, we just broke down out of this 140 day range. And so, you know, it's one of those things, Scott, where it's like, uh, let's try to simplify it. Let's try to simplify it a little bit. Right. Here's what I say is we're just below this big range, right? We can all agree on that. Like we just yeah. broke down the big range and we're just above da -da -da -da, major support, which I think is right around 12K, you know, 12K, 12K, 11, 12, 13K. So we're kind of in this like no man's land in between, you know, the support we just lost and the support below us. And so there's no real price structure in here. You know, there's, you know, lower time frame. maybe uh, you get some like a pattern or something to work with, but there isn't a, a lot of great TA here in between um, in this kind of no man's land. So for me, if I want to go long, not that you asked, but, you know, if I want to go long, I'm just going to wait till we can get back into this range, right? I want to get back into this range because then I know my risk is if we ever get back below the range, I'm out, right? So if we get above 18.2, I can go long. You know, otherwise, I'm just chilling and waiting around 12K to see what happens. And I'm not saying we're definitely going there or even I would definitely buy there, but that would be where I would watch next. Yeah, it's interesting because last time I had on, I'm just going to flip my chart over here. Yeah. Obviously, I, pull, I pulled up the bands inspired by you. And we were talking nice. about this tightening that hadn't happened in literally years, right? It was June yes. 20 or something. I, I, can't, I, I can't remember, yeah. but we broke up. Yes, yes. Right? So like any, in my, listen, you can, you use bands more than I do, but I, you know, I did use them for a long time. Like this right here should have been one of these. 
Yeah, and you break up. Right? When you break out yeah. of that level of consolidation with a spike in volume, right? Yes. I mean, a little bit and yeah. get above the upper band, this is not what you would have expected. And a lower high break too, right? You're breaking that prior high just, you know, 15 candles earlier or whatever that is. Um, you know, you have it on your screen. And we're breaking, you know, breaking that high from October 5th, right? So it was a lower high break. Um, you know, yes, it's, it's um, you know, when you're, but here's the thing though, here's, but, Here's the thing, right? When we were, we knew we were in a sideways channel. So TA, you know, when you're sideways, moving average crosses don't mean as much. Um, you know, these trending things don't mean as much because there's no real trend. So you have to be, uh, expect to get faked out and wait for a major break, which is why I talked about 22.5 to go long, not 20.5, not in between. Um, you have to expect the market to try to chop you out, take your fees, you know, frustrate you. So if you step back and say, okay, I'm, going to be a little bit less reactive to everything right so for example before we had broken down scott we were you know you mentioned you know we were in this state of the titan bollinger bands right about here tightest since november 2020 you could have said all right even with this little break i'm still going to wait for 22.5 right i'm still going to wait to break the major level right and then i'll wait down here to play this level i'm not going to get chopped out in between and a lot of charts are like that um, and you should think about that. You have to under, you have to kind of um, recognize, am I in some type of a channel or did I just break out of the channel and I'm in some no man's land, right? I don't know if I drew that well or illustrated it, but you have to recognize, am I in a well-defined channel or I'm in a chop zone that's going to chop me out? And it's about picking your battles and all that. So, um, but man, I don't know what's going to happen. Next. I really don't know what's going to happen next, but I do think we probably continue lower if you had, you know. If you were well, to ask I mean, me. listen, anything can happen. But when you're looking at this, like, I yeah. mean, here's your June, here's your June low, right? Yeah. And I yeah. mean, look where the bounce ended. <laughs> what do you think about Doesn't Ethereum get, here? You hear people talking about short more, Ethereum, right? Yeah. You hear yeah, people talking about short saying, Ethereum? Oh, yeah. yeah go ahead. Go probably. Sorry. I'm just saying it doesn't get much more of a gratuitous short than 17.5 right there. 17.5. Which would have put you already down to 15.7. And this is consolidation yeah. below resistance. So you got to wait till you're above 17.5 to even think about this. But right yeah. now... You can't tell me 17.5 isn't a good odds short, even if we get another test of it. Is that where you'd go long 17.5 or would you wait till like back up? I'm 18? not touching this. I just, someone was like, do these guys even trade or uh, are they just YouTubers? Right now I'm just right. a YouTuber because I'm not touching yeah. this when I don't have enough information. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, right now I'm not, uh, I'm trying to sort out uh, what's going on mentally and, and on, yes. frankly listen if you're going to trade you have to be in a proper mindset and i cannot uh, make the argument that i am currently in a proper mindset on this market we can devil's advocate though a little bit right like we finally are starting to have the sentiment bottom that we haven't had right you and i've talked about it like so we might have a sentiment bottom or near one what do you think about that oh i think i think there's a great time to buy bitcoin long term I'm just saying for anyone who's, I'm not like zooming into one hour charts and trying to yeah. catch like uh, you know, right. three, two, three percent moves right now. I absolutely yeah. believe that this is the dead dumps of sentiment as bad as we've ever seen. That yeah, should or be, up, that there. Should be up there. Yeah. It should be up there. And so we at least have that and we haven't had it. So, you know, even though maybe the price doesn't have a bottom and, you know, weekly chart shows there's still, you know, major area of interest to low. We're st below. We're still, you know, below the 200. We just broke down. But sentiment um, is is something I'm paying attention to. And we haven't had the sentiment bottom, but now we do. So um, and, and, and what's interesting to compound that is that we actually have this like, yeah, now we have the sentiment bottom opposing. Right. People are so sure it's going lower. It's dead. It's over. Yeah. We also yeah. in stocks have sort of this positive feeling that the bottom's already in and things are going to go up so it's almost like 180 degrees from what's happening in stocks it's 180 degrees i mean the dollar's cooling off i think um like yields are start are going lower although like the two years still hanging in there um you know yields are cooling off a little bit dollars lower you know and that's allowing the spy i mean look at this we're only almost at the 200 um like metals are breaking out silver's ridiculous right like gold's been pretty strong and here's, you know, Bitcoin. And so you wonder, like, if we hadn't had this come out, would we maybe 25. be 25K? Yeah, I mean, not 30K. Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum would be over 20, it would be over 2,000 2K. bucks. I mean, we were at 17, 1800 already before this happened, you know, like in the lead up. I, yeah. Yeah. So that's, I mean, and it's not always useful to play the, you know, we would have this or would have that game. But um, 
it's something because you know and the, that's why when we when and you've done this too and you've talked about correlation but you've i, I assume you've told people like you still have to trade the chart in front of you because sometimes it will yeah. correlate and sometimes you know yeah. it doesn't so correlation is not reliable yeah correlation is not reliable it's, it's a talking point it's maybe a guiding point um but you know here go back to eth and you were you were you were asking me when i was uh yeah before, i would just so what do you see I was just hearing there were some reports. People, big short came out Citron and some other guy, this and that. I mean, you know, the the the, the FA part of it isn't as interesting to me. But um, you know, look at the MA two hundred here. You know how we just you know we just rejected here the simple moving average, the blue line, and so it's interesting. And yeah, sure, it corresponded with maybe some of the rest of the market breaking down. But it's just interesting how. You know, from just a pure TA, you see it rejecting there, you come all the way down, and then more or less you just have this charge up into the, you know, the 200. And we just happen to reject right there again. So, like, just from being a technical trader, um, Ethereum gave you a setup where you were watching for a failure, and then you had the, you know, the up thrust or the deviation, right? Where you yep. break above the high, you come back below. So, kind of Ethereum gave you like a good technical trade. Um, you know what is it doing here though scott i mean i don't know man i mean 1270 it's, it's retesting yeah i was gonna say it's sort of i mean it depends on where you draw that line i think it's retesting that uh support is resistance you and i yeah. and when we had a uh, burb on here we were talking about 1284 yeah. right yeah the highs from that sort of ascending yep. triangle that we had over here yeah right this was for anyone who's listening this was that ascending triangle it yeah. popped up to the target of that boom so now we're i think we're back testing that as resistance i mean that's where yes, i bought when it i agree landed there we're below. So it looks like resistance. resistance. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we lost it. Now it's resistance. So you can see that essentially, you know, it's just a pullback. It's essentially just what's called a pullback where you have the resistance. Boom, boom, boom. Come up. Maybe hold it. Now we're below it and retesting it. And my drawing skills are terrible today. But um, yeah, I mean, that's that's essentially what it looks like. So then, you know, for me, at least, you know, what do you do again? It's all, anybody can say, oh, it looks bad. Well, what do you do? I think, you know, maybe you start to get interested around a thousand to see what the price does there. It doesn't mean you buy there, but that's an area of interest. And if we can kind of charge up, get above 1420, you know, I'll go long, you know, and that's kind of how I would approach it. And I would avoid everything in between, you know, personally. Yeah, this feels like a very, I mean, I feel like it's a theme, but this feels like it's just generally avoidable. I mean, are you actively yeah. trading this right now? Anything? I'm not, I, I like, I, I was not for like the last two days. I ridiculously traded like whatever, four or five days ago when Bitcoin was breaking down and Seoul and FTT. I took like a hundred, a couple hundred trades that day. And then it's just like, oh, now I'm burned out. And now I'm just going to like relax. Um, and there's not much to do here, but there's time to do a lot. There's times to observe. And this is like an observe time. So I'm not actively trading today. There's really nothing I want to do here today. Unless we get some volatility, I want to see if I get we get like some action and volatility, I'll jump in. But this, this, there's no real edge in my view right here. Yeah. Are you hunting shorts or longs right now? Or is it kind of like well, below one you're shorting and above one you're longing? Yeah. Or is you, I mean, you have Bitcoin, a bias still, I'd imagine that we're bearish. And we're definitely bearish. So if I wanted to short Bitcoin, I'd wait for it to get up to around 18K. Right. I yeah. start to look for short around 18K. But if we flip 18.2, I'd start to look to go long. I'm not going to do anything in between here. I'm not going to even play the EMA eight. I'm not going to play it, you know, bounce to there. Uh, I'm going to let things settle down. Um, I, you know, I had a pretty good, pretty good month already. I'm not trying to mess it up. I'm not trying to, you know, to, 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 um, tempt fate here. Uh, it needs to settle down. So yeah, if we bounce, I would look for a short, but I'm, I'm really just, I want to hang back and let things settle down. Um, when I don't feel like I have a great edge, that's what I want to do is just, is just relax and, and watch. Um, but if we V, if we get a sharp drop, I'm really looking long Bitcoin. Yeah, you know what I mean? So Cause we're, we're close. We're close. I so. I'm glad you think so as well. I'm looking at the weekly here. I saw people mentioning it and I've mentioned it a million yeah, what times. Is that? Yep. Um, this is the weekly Bitcoin line chart, right? Okay. So they're saying, Hey, we got bullish divergence on the weekly. Well, not yet. Just to be clear, we had bullish divergence there, yeah. got, which yeah. brought that nice pop up to 21, but RSI mm -hmm. got rejected. If you're an yeah. RSI pattern drawer and we're nowhere sure. near here, but now, yeah, I mean, if the week ends up like this, we will have this massive kind of bullish building, divergence. Bullish yeah. Divergence I call it double here, divergence too. Double but divergence right here. You either. can't like, this is not closed for the people who are saying we have bullish divergence. This could easily be pointing down and there could be no elbow, which gives us really no information. 
Yeah. And to point out the people who are commenting on the other bullish divergence, quote unquote, failing, well, that's because I draw it however you want. It can be yeah. from here. It can be from here. There was clear hidden bearish divergence after that bullish divergence, right? So that, yeah. to me, that cancels the bullish divergence when you sort of see that. But this could be yeah. sort of what you're talking about, this massive signal that we are starting to bottom. I mean, this listen, price could come down another $3,000 and you could still get a bullish divergence with weekly RSI having hit 25. It could go to 10 and that yeah. might happen. And the divergence is to let is to kind of get you to to look for price structure too. And as you know, you know, it's not like the divergence is going to give you a signal. It's going to say like, you know, pay attention. It gives you, you know, it's telling you to start to look to pay to pay attention. At least from my thinking, it needs to be your trade needs to be based on, you know, price interacting with support and resistance. And we're in the in-between zone. There's just nothing here, brother. You know, um crypto cred put out a great video uh, and I retweeted it. And it talks about you know, when you rocket, it was this concept. He talked about how there's really no support between, you know, 12 and 16. When you rocket ship up, you just slow bleed down. I mean, he described it differently. I'm not sure the, the phrase he used, but, you know, if you come up and you do a bull flag and then you break out and maybe do an ascending triangle, you'll have support on the way down, right? Because you created price structure. You know, here, when you just rocket ship up, like Mana did it, like Mana did this. I don't know the numbers, but Mana did this and then just slow bled for months. So that's yeah. why you want a trend to consolidate. And that's why it's good when a trend pauses and consolidates rather than like, it's not a bad thing. People freak out, you know, they get, they get freak out, they get bearish, but no, if your thing, if your bullish chart is pausing and consolidating, that's really good. That's really healthy. That's what you want to look for. Um, yeah. You don't, you don't want the rocket straight up. I was trying to bring up, yeah. I think Doge was a good example of that. Right. I mean, you yes. Got, I mean, yeah. Uh, here's what he's talking about guys. Yeah. <laughs> right? Really here. Chart. <laughs> but like when it got yeah. up, this was the most gratuitous short because once it started to fail and got below those head, I mean, it was just a very slow bleed up. It's exactly what you're talking about. I, I have mana here. I haven't pulled it up, but uh, I mean, it mana did it a couple times. Did Rocked a couple. It up, look at that first floated boom. literally boom. all the way back to within a few cents, right? And then yes. a few rockets, and now just bleeding back down. It's a great example. You know that Doge chart's interesting, and you know if you just step back in that Doge chart, you're like, "Oh, that's a terrible chart. I hate that. I'll never play it." But then you add in, "Oh, but it's Elon's favorite one," and you're like, "Okay, now it's a little more interesting." So it's like you've got to be careful not to get too caught up. And I've done this myself, where I've seen that and I've overinterpreted the chart as bullish, and somehow I found myself trying to convince myself that it's going to go up. Now I look at that, I'm like, "That's just a garbage chart." So you know. We got to be careful not getting too influenced by these narratives. Yeah, I mean, this moment right here, 74 cents, that was Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And the narrative was that he was going to talk about Doge and it was going to go up, which to me was like the most gratuitous short in history, right? In history, so you can't get yeah. caught up in the narratives. What, is there anything else that you're specifically looking at at the moment? I mean, do you, I, you know, whatever. I mean, here's what I will say, and then we can just whatever. But I think we want to look for a relative strength here. I don't know really what they are, but we should pay attention. Let's, what's that? <laughs> Matic. Matic, is it? Let me see. Because like, I mean, that's like, how I, I I haven't even looked. I know I have the chart, but like yeah. Matic is still hovered around a dollar. This was the entirety it's of the price action. There. That's and it's still. I mean, listen. Yeah. Matic bottomed at thirty-one cents. It's currently three x that. We're talking it's about Bitcoin good. breaking its yearly lows, and Matic is sitting three times its yearly low. Yeah, Matic definitely has relative strength, at least uh, to Bitcoin. And one like easy trick is you can just look at you know, where it is in relation to June lows. Like if you know the market bottomed here, yep. right? And now we're up here. Well, is Bitcoin doing this? No, Bitcoin like has done that, right? So you say, okay, like I don't even need a BTC pair, a Matic BTC. You can just see that this is stronger. Um, you know, and this one definitely, it's, it's it's has relative strength to the market. It's above that level. It's above the 200, you know, um, just keep an eye on that low for sure. But Matic, Uni has some relative strength. Um, TWT, yeah. I guess, because CD's CZ was, you know, tweeting it and obviously that, that yeah. gave it a pump. But, you know, even without that, you just saw kind of a multi month ascending triangle had been developing. So you had this bullish coil anyway, this bullish price that. action on TWT. Is you that know, Trust Wallet? Yeah, Trust Wallet, that, yeah, TWT. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you've got a couple things. Um, but, you know, I'm personally not like stacking alts here. I mean, what about like soul? Do you like soul? Or you think it's going to three bucks, Scott, or what? Yeah, I, I can't. I just can't. You can't. I, 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 like you won't. I mean, I, I think it could be bottoming, but I, I, can, yeah. I won't, I should say. But yeah, I mean, listen, yeah. I, I, I haven't even, like, again, I haven't bring it up right now. One second.
Yeah. I mean, it's good volume. It's at support, but momentum is 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 powerful. This is definitely support. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Exactly. Look at that. So that's a good example of of a consolidation on the way up that provides for support. That's a great example of it, right? So here's Um, the thing, right? So all the actually, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, like in real time. Yeah. A lot of the in in the past with some of the sort of liquidations or or contagion, we had forced selling. Yeah. Right. Like these yeah. were positions that were getting closed and a lot of Bitcoin had to be sold to cover, et cetera. Yeah. I'm not saying this is a silver lining necessarily, but with everything actually locked, those coins aren't going to be sold. It's almost like they went mm. into cold storage. Right? right. If you're if you have 200, 300 million dollars, your hedge fund, it's sitting on FTX. There's no selling pressure with that yet. Like that may come <laughs> later right. in a liquidation or something like that. Yeah, but it's kind of an interesting. I, I'm sort of sorting it out in my mind right now, but it's sort of an interesting thing because there's a lot of coins that are just frozen and not really on the market, and those were coins that were actively on exchange to be traded. That's a good point, and um, you know, if we devil continue to devil's advocate, I see your descending triangle that you drew there. I mean, we kind of met the measured move, you know, yeah. like more or less. So. You know, some that, damage yeah. has been done. We're not calling the bottom, but I'm kind of devil's advocating it. Cav advocating it. Devil's advocating it. I don't know if that's said right, but um, we got volume too. Look at this volume at support. It wouldn't surprise me to see sold bounce here. Um, you know, maybe back up to 25, 26, but then you'd want to short it. So that's that's the Just thing. Giving you people know? the idea of what you're talking about here. I mean, something like this. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's appealing it didn't quite yeah i mean it's pretty much you don't expect it to go all the way to the measured move that's a big enough oh wait i'm not even drawing from the right place so yeah that is literally fulfilling the measured move within right. a buck so it's like okay we broke down and we we you know like uh we had the result of what we should have had uh, at that point so now you start to look again and see what happens you know from here you know you know lord only knows of course but um we're at support it's good volume it's interesting but um but there's no confidence in the market. How can you be comfortable buying something like that? What if it's part of the liquidation? What if they have to sell? What if this? What if that? Um, the whole market's in shambles. How's REIT, Scott? How are we going to get another bull run without retail, you know, being involved? You know, oh, I want to I wanna onboard my fiat, but where can I do it? How can you have a bull run without exchange? I mean, the whole thing's a complete mess at this point. Yeah, I, I don't see the like, listen, I think that it can trade up and down from here, but I don't see the like all time high coming soon case. And I don't understand how we're going to even make it. I think maybe more favorable regulation than we are expecting since we're expecting it to be so goddamn awful. But beyond that, right. I don't know. But, but it was listen, a centralized that mean that it failed, right? You never know. Like, listen, I mean, Sailor, nobody saw MicroStrategy coming and he set off an yeah. epic bull run for, you know, that uh, seven or eight months. Yeah. Well, it, now, yeah, I, we'll have to see. Well, I mean, it was and it wasn't even it wasn't the decentralized players. It was the centralized players, too, that failed us. Right. I don't, I don't know who made this that should point. be. This should be an advertisement for Bitcoin. I mean, this in, should in be theory, an advertising, but the, you know, yeah. centralized uh Ponzi schemes failing was sort of the reason that this was uh, created. I mean, FTT yes. is basically a mimic of a central bank printing money. It's a fiat system, right? So, I yes. mean, I see it. I think we, I think the smoke just needs to clear a bit here. Yeah. Um, I just don't think we know the breadth of the damage. And so it's impossible to assess, which is why you and I, like, I, I know you hate to say it and I'm going to put you on the spot with it. But right before you said, yeah. listen, charts don't mean as much right now. I hate to say it. Yes, right? it's true. Because one, you know? like, God, one piece of horrible news, like that someone boom. massive was exposed that we don't know about, and boom, your chart's meaningless, right? We're in, it's a headline-sensitive environment. Um, I think retail's thirsty for any hopium. So even like a good article, something good is, is, is potentially could cause a short-term fluctuation. So we're in this headline-sensitive environment where, and in between major support levels. So TA, I mean, there's no structure here other than telling you to be patient and wait for the price to get, you know, to one of those major levels. Yeah. Uh, Redbeard here said there are still exchanges for retail. What do you mean without retail? Well, I mean, between, I would say that between Voyager, Celsius, not necessarily exchanges, BlockFi, Liquid, FTX, that a large percentage of retail have lost all or most or a percentage of their assets. Yes, there are still exchanges, but people clearly don't, trust them. And my view is that now an exchange 
not all like, but I, I've always been of the view that you should keep what you're trading on the exchange and get everything else off because why mess with it? That's to any exchange, not specific to any of them. That's what Jesse but Powell said, right? That's what Jesse Powell said. Still off ramp. Even even CZ yeah. said that, right? Those guys have yeah. they. Uh, frankly, like you'd think they would be saying, "Hey, we're safe. Keep your assets here." Like FTX yeah, exactly. Did. But yeah. the reality is, like they don't want the custody. I think, right? Like they want mm. the responsibility to be in your hands if you're trading. Sure, have at it. But I think that you know, right now, the mentality around exchanges is it's my on and off ramp. But like, I only want the coins that are going to my bank account on there. You know, when I'm cashing out or otherwise, I'm taking them off. A lot of people won't learn the lesson. Yeah. I mean, I had a friend who, you know, uh, texted me two days ago. He's like, man, I got some Bitcoin on BlockFi. And like three months ago, he had messaged me and said, what should I do with these? I said, get them off. Mm. <laughs> like, I was like, there's no reason at this point after Voyager and Celsius have blown up to have your funds sitting in BlockFi. I was like, I should have listened to you. You know what I mean? Like, yep. listen, we've all done it. So there's hard lessons to learn. I don't a lot anyone. of great, a lot of smart people lost a lot of money. So if you're, if you're like, a small per small holder and you lost your money a lot of like big holders did too and um so everybody has to look at this and see what we can learn from it and and some will learn like you said some won't it will definitely cause a push towards more self custody you know which is what the whole point of bitcoin is supposed to be right not your keys not your cheese you know yeah. so paul garrett <sighs> says uh, cheds 2024 i think he wants you to run for president yeah the only thing I run for is, is dinner time when somebody tells me there's a meal coming, you know? Hungry. Hungry. Always all the time. hungry. I'm always hungry in this new diet. You know, it's I'm Oh, always you hungry. just started intermittent fasting, right? How long yeah. ago? How long has it been now? Like two months, two and a half months. Took that's exactly how long it took me to not be hungry. Really? Yeah. Maybe all right. eight, eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, now I'm 15 months in and it's oh, like I mean light life change. And I don't think about food. I, I, when, I think yeah, about it yeah. differently. I've changed my, it changed my relationship with food. And that's, and that's like the big thing, right? Your relationship with food, you know, like it, it owns you, it controls you. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that, you know, um, I know you limited alcohol too, right? Like you just don't drink after seven. I don't drink, yeah. Like my, I keep the eating window as my drinking window is all I'm, a, I'm an amazing God tier day drinker now. <laughs> so good at it. So good I have at a it. friend, <laughs> I won't mention his name, but. I have a friend who's like that. So, uh, Jeff is not here for diet advice, and yep. uh, Brian has said that there's a diet channel. I would like you to know that uh, when shit goes bad in crypto, uh, crypto influencers become diet influencers. Yep. So you guys and can pillow, check out my new TikTok channel. Yeah, I'm Pil gonna have a new uh, cooking TikTok channel for you guys. Pill, I'm gonna be a pillow salesman, salesman along with Pump. You know, but we gotta pivot, Scott. We gotta know. We gotta pivot, right? I gotta do. I mean, they're gonna have to become like a '90s dance move influencer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, or be me. I'm have to do something with intermittent fasting and dieting. Yeah, see, there's people who want more di diet advice here, just to know. Right, yeah. right. Not we should. Well, first we have to say not diet advice before we give the diet advice. Is that right? Yeah, I think it's not. Yeah, not dietary advice, but here's some diet advice. Exactly. Um, it, yeah, lots of ramen. Mark says lots of ramen recipes on the Have Fun Being Poor cooking show. Mark did have a great point actually here before I'm trying to zoom back and find it. But Mark, you said something to, oh, here you go. Some people are afraid of the process of moving off exchanges. It's very easy to send your coins into the ether. Yeah. That's true. That's so what the hell, like what do we need to like um, train retail? Do we need retail education? I mean, what a challenge. What an yeah, unbelievable I think, challenge. I think CZ said something literally about this yesterday. He said until it was, we talked about it. He said until grandma you know, can safely move her coins off exchange, we can never reach mainstream adoption. So now it's yes. just a UX, UI, and education problem if we want people to do that. But like, you're fucked if you do, fucked if you don't. You leave it on the exchange, you get hacked. But if you don't have the knowledge of how to self-custody, then you blow up your own portfolio, sending yeah. it You lose, away. what if you lose your friggin' flash drive? I lose stuff all the time. Like, and that's... Yeah. <laughs> It's scary. I don't know. Yeah. It, I don't have the answers. I just, you know, I don't have any answers, but, um, yeah. What a mess. Kristen, like, by the, the way, the, says she can eat any, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, 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 you go ahead. I, I, I'll she just say she can eat the, anything the she wants lining. in her eating window and not gain an ounce. I, I would just say the bright lining is we have the sentiment bottom. I mean, we've needed yeah. that. That hasn't been here. So we have that. That's like a bright lining. It's, I feel like we should be bottoming. We can be bottoming. Even if it takes another month, 
Um, we've started the process of bottoming. I know that much just based on sentiment, but the, now the price has to follow. I concur. I think outside of anything just mind blowing that we see fall out, but I don't think there's anything bigger than FTX and them taking out BlockFi. I mean, I, I just don't see how it gets bigger. You know what? I, I miss God. I don't even want this on recording, but like in a theoretical world, there's no reason to believe this, but like if Binance or Coinbase blew up, that would, that would be the thing that I think would invalidate the sentiment bottom. But I don't believe either of those things are remotely even, you know, everything's non-zero, but not even close. So yeah, I agree. Like it can't get worse. Well, sentiment wise sentiment wise yeah we're we're close to it i agree and maybe a little bit but we're pretty much there and that's and that's a good thing because we haven't had that there's been too much enthusiasm you've been around for multiple cycles so have i so we know we need this and at least that's the bright lining to so many people um in so much pain so i'm trying to look for a little bit of a bright lining and that's that we can start bottoming here well, speaking of bright lining, when's the next book coming out? Thanks, man. Uh, two weeks. See. I think I said that last time, but we're yeah. But when are we, and where where will people be able to find it? Uh, that's trading quotes. I'm almost done editing it. This is one of the preview copies. Um, it'll be on Amazon. It'll be on my Twitter account, and you can see it on Amazon under the author Cheds. I'll do an Audible too. I'll I'll narrate it, but that will take me another four weeks to do. Um, I mean, you're like a real writer now, man. You're not like, you're not a flash in a pan. You're, you're good. You're an author. I'm, I have, I'm, I'm learning how to be a better writer. My editor was showing me how bad I am. Cause he's like, run on sentence, run on sentence. Don't say this. Don't say that. So I'm getting better at writing too. Just like anything like trading practice makes perfect. So I'm enjoying writing next book will be a trading journal that's coming out after the um, trading quotes book. That should take me like another year or so. And so, and then I'll do a poker book after that and then I'll do this and that. So it's fun. Is it an actual, when you say trading journal, is it an actual journal of past yes. trades that you're sharing or is it sort of yes. a theoretical, this is how you would do it All of that. your so actual trade? It's going to be probably like 80% blank pages. Fill this out. Why I'm entering, um, you know, how I'm feeling, stop loss thesis, what I learned, you know, what happened. So there's that. And then it's going to be explanations of each category and why they're important. And then there will be examples of my own trading journal and what trades I took. So it's basically just going to be a journal for people to fill out and to learn how to fill out a trading journal. Um, people have been asking for it. I think there's good demand and I'll try to make it something uh, it's so like important. a good project. Yeah. It's one of those things that I uh, stopped doing, right? I mean, it, yeah. it, I mean, it kind of obviously I started trading less, but it was such a fundamental uh, aha light switch moment for me when I first started journaling, it fixed a lot of problems. Having self-accountability. The problem is you have to actually go back and read it. Yes, hold that's true. Accountable, right? But, <laughs> yes, yeah. that's that's yeah, the I, hard I part. Yeah, that's the hard part. Yeah. So, but I'm you never learn a lesson if you can't uh, go back and revisit the pain and and the things, the mistakes that you made, especially the emotional part that you tagged on, because I think a lot of people yeah. keep their trading journal simply for like entry, exit, and setup. Like a log, and like I think it's much more important. Why did I do it? That's it. I mean, well, you you should write down. I I chased because I was, you know, because of the FOMO and because my prior trade, I just lost some money. So I was chasing after that. Like if we don't get on top of our behaviors that, that are causing us to lose money, we'll just keep doing the same things over and over again. Um, we have to monitor. Nobody's going to monitor you. You have to do it for yourself. You, you know, nobody else is going to fix your trades. So you either get on it or you just lose all your money. I agree. I think I kept you 15 minutes too long. I think we told everyone, follow him, Big Cheds, on Twitter. Check out all the previous books, the new books, your spaces, your YouTube. You're, you're, uh, you're a busy guy. So I'm going to let uh, Cheds go when you get out of here. So just a little housekeeping for everyone. Tomorrow I have BitBoy. Everybody's been asking for it. He's on his uh, strong redemption arc, I would say. And uh, listen, I, I want to hear what he has to say, what information he uh, says he has, because clearly... One way or another, he was way, way ahead of uh, what happened here. And one of the few peoples, I think, people, I think, can say that. And then Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I will be off because uh, it's going to be Thanksgiving week. My kids are going to be home and I'm taking, uh, taking that. It was planned in advance of the FTX thing. But, man, am I glad I'm getting an excuse to uh, unplug for a week. You ever do that? Absolutely. I, you know, and if I've done, I've blown up trading accounts and I've taken a month off, two months off, you have to do that. So walking away, whether it's planned or not, 
just encourage people to step back. If you're feeling out of control, if you're like, what the hell's going on? I don't know what I'm doing. Just stop, step away, go for a walk, try to get some, some perspective. It's a great thing to do. Appreciate it, man. It's always a pleasure to have Cheds. Guys, I will be back tomorrow. It will be your last stream for about a week. Cheds doing Dan. I got the same moves. Yeah, you got all the moves, DJ. I brother. posted some moves on my son. Uh, I was jamming this morning uh, pre-breakfast, man. He was getting it. So it kids fun. know how to have fun. We get old and we get crusty. We get grumpy. These kids, man, they're just, they don't care. 24-7 20, 20, crushing it. All right, man. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you tomorrow. Peace. Let's go.